Hi guys, uh, welcome to our poetry talk today. My name is Sarah Martinez. I'm a librarian here at Pecan Campus Library. Uh, we are here to discuss the lecture series called Transforming Our World. And with me today, we have uh, one of my colleagues. Hi, I'm Pat Sotelo. I'm also one of the librarians here at Pecan. And I'm really excited about this series. So hopefully you all enjoy what we do today or we talk about today. So yes, welcome so, and thank you for coming. Yes, and we actually encourage uh, participa uh, participation. Uh, you know, turn on your screens if you'd like. Uh, there's going to be a chat box there that you can uh, place uh, questions in if you have any questions, comments, or you want to contribute. Okay. Awesome. So on the first uh, Thursday of the next two months, we'll continue the lecture series at 3 p.m. and it discusses our surrounding environment with the upcoming elections and social change. Today, what we're going to be discussing is uh, the uh, social environment and we're going to add a little bit of the element of poetry to it. Uh, what we're going to first discuss is uh, on the, I can't remember exact the date, I apologize. I think, I think it was. was Yes, September 3rd, we had a uh, lecture series. Uh, they, there was uh, three guests that we uh, discussed or uh, talked with. One of them was Tam Tamara Meckler, the other one, Erica DeBorn, and Ernesto Herrera. So what they did is they uh, talked to us a little bit about uh, sustainability. There was uh, the first individual, Tamara, Meckler, uh, she had a very interesting, uh, she's actually a CF, CFO of a, Fortuna yes, Fortuna Coolers. What they do is they take the waste product of uh, coconut husks and they convert it into coolers for the farmers in uh, the Philippines. So we thought that that was kind of uh, interesting because she recognized a way, uh, I'm sorry, she recognized that there was a waste and a need, and then she made it became uh, become a way to make a difference in local communities. Uh, and th what that reminded me of was uh, plastic bottles. You know, a lot of us use plastic bottles here at work and uh, we put them in the recycle bin in the hopes that they're gonna get recycled. And what's really interesting is I remember seeing a post recently where they're converting these plastic bottles into shoes. I've seen them convert them into, uh, uh, manufacture them into uh, clothing. Uh, again, I thought that was kind of interesting. And when, isn't it better to have a cooler made out of coconut husk instead of the styrofoam that a lot of people buy those for, so. Exactly. Yeah. So. That's kind of uh, nice. Uh, the next artist was Erica DeBorn. She had her artwork displayed at IMIS. That's the uh, local museum here. She was first uh, displayed in 2018 and most recently in 2020. The name of her artwork was Art Dialogues with Mother Earth. And I really encourage you guys to like check out her artwork, even if you just Google that in uh, into Google Art Dialogues with Mother Earth. It's really amazing. And the reason for that is because her murals are really big pieces. And um, one of them, I'm just going to lightly go into a, a description. I, like I said, I really encourage you guys to go check it out. Is a huge well, right? And on this well, there's tons of trash, uh, you know, that's dumped into the oceans. And then on the bottom of that, you'll have, there's a uh, children playing in the sand. And the artist was discussing how, you know, uh, we all get to enjoy the beach. We go to the beach, but yet we ignore the fact that all around us is surrounding that pollution. So her artwork really makes you think about how, you know, we, it's very easy to turn a blind eye to, to, you know, all the, the waste that's going into our oceans. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Our uh, next artist that we were, uh, that was part of the talks was Ernesto Herrera. He is a, a wildlife biologist uh, with Frontera Audubon Society. And uh, he described how his internship gave him a new perspective on native plant 
life and animal life. And uh, we thought that, you know, Pat and I were discussing about um, his experiences and he mentioned one particular animal that we rarely see anymore. And that's the horny toad. When I first moved to the valley many, many years ago, uh, you know, we had our undeveloped uh, plot of land and we would actually see tons of these little horny toads all over the place. A lot of people know them by horned toads, the Texas horned lizard. And uh, even the little babies, they were so adorable. But as the area around us continued to develop, we saw less and less of them. And this is something that he shared with us. And this is something that became one of his passions was um, how he can, how, you know, learning about local plant life and animal life is just learning about the the aspect in general is a uh, good way to, for, you know, teaching education, conservation. He mentioned the national, what is it, the national, what is it, I mean, I'm sorry, the natural garden center that's down mm -hmm. on uh, Bicentennial, and before it was botanical gardens, and I remember it as botanical gardens, and I do remember they let it go, they just let it go free. Mm -hmm. This time it's really neat that he's actually doing something with it and actually putting in that those plants and wild to make sure that the wildlife does return back because that's that's part of what he's trying to conserve what's there already for us because we're losing a lot of our natural you know area around here that's and a lot true. of the animals are just moving on and that's we're very true of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, another interesting aspect that he brought up was uh you know there's a lot of websites and web pages that you can go to if you take pictures of local plant life, animal life that you're unfamiliar with, take a picture, you can upload it. And I really wish uh, he would have maybe kind of highlighted one of those um, uh, web pages or sites that you could go to to do this. And other members of that community can go on there and kind of explain a little bit, oh, you know, that's actually, you know, a lizard that's from here. Or in, in, in other words, identify it and then give more information. And then again, that's just really all part of education and conservation. So we really encourage you, if you haven't seen them, to just watch, you know, go, go visit them, see them, mm -hmm. uh, because the photography that he took was amazing. <gasps> amazing. And you know? if you guys did miss that series uh, or that lecture, we have it recorded and it's pasted on our library's blog site. And it's I think right here we have on the a, chat. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. That's great. They did put it mm -hmm. in the chat there. So, yeah. So, if you're interested in uh, viewing that previous uh, artist lecture, we really encourage you guys to go check it out. Like I said, Erica's artwork is amazing. Ernesto's uh, photography, photography was, great. was gorgeous, mm -hmm. yes. And then, of course, uh, Tam Tamara Meckler, I mean, you know, what she's doing in, in general. Making you know, a what, change in, her envi in the environment. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Definitely. Um, our next section here, or portion that we're going to be talking about, is um, basically these individuals, what they're doing is they're just using different types of tools to help educate others to bring up to um you know uh to bring awareness thank you bring awareness <laughs> to, <laughs> i get tongue twisted sometimes thank you so much yeah mm -hmm. bring awareness to um others about the changing environment and what i liked about our three guests was that each one of them used a different medium Erica DeBorn used uh, her artwork to discuss and to convey a perspective. Uh, Tamara did her, the same thing, same as Ernesto. He uses his photography. And today what we want to do is we want to incorporate poetry in terms of the changing environment. Okay. Um, aside from poetry, and we're going to open this up to our guests now, aside from poetry, what other mediums or tools can we use utilize to help us illustrate the changes in our environment because there have been changes ever since this pandemic we've seen you know cleaner air we've mm -hmm. seen a lot of the wildlife return back to their natural habitats in Africa because there are no tourists there anymore so they can actually roam freely without you know being pushed into small corners of just the areas and I thought that was really interesting too it made me think like you know what Earth Day should really be you know I know that takes place on April 22nd you know Earth Day should be a day where we really do that you know make 
make a conscious decision to stay home, you know, not use our vehicles, you know, just something because with our pandemic, just being on lockdown for a month, a lot of places saw changes. I know the there's a river in Europe somewhere where the water no longer was murky and dirty. It became super crystal clear. And, and I think that's something that we could all benefit from and most importantly, our environment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So did anybody have any questions or comments or or wanted to share their ideas of other mediums or tools that they could use to help bring awareness? Let's see here. Let me see if I can see our chat. I think I do see one thing. Oh, that's our our blog there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. So let's see here. We are Okay, so as a, uh, we're going to use poetry as a method, as a tool to help inspire, educate, and uh, most importantly, uh, poetry, what we were doing was we were researching uh, when we were approached to to do this uh, lecture talk, or sorry, this talk, um, both her and I were like, you know what, we have no experience with poetry, you know short of, you know, just obviously working in a library and, and, you know, reading a few excerpts here and there. But other than that, we didn't have a lot of experience. So, you know, naturally being in a library, what we did is we started doing our research. Yes. And uh, we found that there is a lot of uh, there. It's, it's very highly used for therapeutic reasons. It's a stress reliever. And to be honest, there's no right or wrong way to do it. And then, um, you know, and, and so that's, you know, in researching it and, and getting a couple of books, we were able to, uh, we were introduced to a particular type of uh, poetry, okay, and uh, that type of poetry is called a haiku, okay, and uh, I had no idea what any poetry was, so mm-hmm. like, like Sarah said, being, you know, in the library, sort of researching, finding out, you know, what is available, what do we have? We have several resources and we found, you know, we went in through our shelves and of course y'all are more than welcome to come visit us. We are open. Uh, so, you know, you can stop by and visit us. And I found a book on haiku and I thought, you know what? Haiku sounds so interesting. What is haiku? You know, it's like, what is this method? And of course, there was among other stuff. And among that stuff, not only did I find haiku, I found, of course, books that we have on, you know, writing across cultures, all different kinds of books, you know, writing your own personal poetry, reading, oh, here's a poetry, here's a toolkit on poetry. And we even have prompts for children. (laughs) So, you know, I thought, wow, that is so cool that we have all these resources available. Why not share it with people, right? That we do have this available. So, you know... It was just, we had to do our you know, research because that's what we do <laughs> that's what we're here for, to help anybody who needs help with any type of research, of course. And so it's like, I had no idea what a haiku was. And I just, the, the whole word just captured my attention. What is a haiku? It sounds so cool. What is it? Well, like I said, I did my research. <laughs> it is actually... Um, Sarah's going to put up a little slide so that you can kind of follow along what it is, what a haiku is. It go. first emerged as Japanese literature during the 17th century. Uh, it wasn't known as a haiku until the 19th century. And what it is, is just a short three-line poem, I guess you want to call it. It's what a haiku is. And it just requires three lines. The first line has five syllables. The second line has seven syllables and the third line has five syllables. So it's really, really short and it's really, really neat. And what it is, it's actually the subject matter is uh, it's a it's a description, objective description, description, I'm sorry, of nature. So that's exactly what we're talking about, our Mm -hmm. environment and nature. So I thought, oh, this is perfect for our talk. Why not have, you know, y'all share with us a haiku, writing your own haiku, and it's just suggestive of one of the seasons evoking a definite emotional response. And as you can see down at the bottom, Miss Sarah Marie used her talent (laughs) to actually (laughs) write one, and this is hers. And it says, you see how it has the five syllables, winds blow so briskly, stay forever, never leave, fall season is here that is just 
what a haiku is. It is just really five syllables, seven syllables, and five syllables again. I took my hand at doing it too, but mine's not written up there. I'll just read it to you. Windy days and nights, the large tree, sway, the large tree sways to and fro, forever watching. It's just, Very you know, nice. it doesn't take that long for us just to kind of go, oh, cool. You know, you can actually, and I was so proud because it was my first haiku ever, you know? <laughs> so it's like, oh, I'm a poet. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I guess we can take this opportunity right now to actually discuss what the library is going to be doing. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create, and let me go ahead and stop sharing here just temporarily. Okay, we'll, we'll put, put that up, up in, a bit. in just a second. Yes. Uh, what the library is going to do is we're going to create an anthology. Okay, we're going to gather uh, submissions of your uh, poetry, you know, and uh, we're going to have it published and make it where it is uh, where you can download it. So at the end of our talk today, we're going to go ahead and give you those um, options or you know, instructions on how to uh, information. Yes, and how to submit your your work of art, and hey, you can be part of uh, history and you know something that's our out there. Absolutely, exactly. and you can tell everybody I'm published. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see here. We have. Um, if anything, let's go ahead and take this. Before we go, before we go further, Kenya has yes. a great idea that she put oh, um, on her chat. She says we can use videos to show the difference since the pandemic on how the environment has changed. Oh. We can include before and after pictures of the environment to show proof at how big a change can make. You know, that's, that's a big change. It's true. I mean, that is awesome. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. People are very visual. I agree. I feel like if we should visual, uh, visual differences in the environment, we can start uh, bringing more people into the awareness. Absolutely. You mm -hmm. know, that's great. And of course, visual is, you know, a lot of us are visual learners. So that's how we will be able to, of course, um, see the difference it's a, mm -hmm. i'm sure there's a big change like i said i thought it was amazing knowing that a lot of the animals who are there there's tours in africa can actually go out there and now roam free i guess they are now able to roam free without mm -hmm. having everybody just watching them yeah Very true. Tours. yeah I see also on here in our chat section, uh, we posted a link. Here's an opportunity to create artwork or use photography to be part of the STC Library Art Gallery social media exhibition. Okay, that's really, really awesome. I had no idea. I'm going to totally have a lot of submissions for that because I love taking pictures uh, of our local surrounding area, uh, animal pictures. I'm kind of known for that around here, like, you know, me and my pets. <laughs> So, okay, we welcome and, and invite everybody to submit their, their artwork on there. That's really neat. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to give you guys an opportunity to create a short haiku or even just a poem, just a couple of lines there uh, that can inspire change in our environment or encourage someone to take, a, uh, to take action. We're going to use poetry as a tool. Uh, let's go ahead and give you a quick five minutes and put something together. Uh, during those five minutes, we're gonna have a little bit of a timer up. And uh, again, we're just gonna pause really quickly give you guys a few minutes to kind of jot down some ideas. And if you feel comfortable, we're going to invite you to share your poetry with us. Yeah. And our prompt for this, just to give you a little, you know, start off on it is fall. Since mm -hmm. we actually had a little cool weather this morning. It's How appropriate. Fall coming around the corner. So if you can think of anything, you know, um, related to fall, our next season coming up. So, and then again, if you prefer something else, it is really up to you. It's your choice. So, um, just you know let the what is it the the juices the creative juices flow <laughs> <laughs> yes so let's see here we're going to put it on a quick five minute timer and like I said what we do is we're really encouraging you guys to take these few minutes and to kind of you know just again just think creatively and see what you can come up with and let me start sharing my screen here and in case you forgot what a haiku was and our prompt, it's on the chat. The three lines, five, seven, five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables, and then, of course, the prompt fall. Okay. Okay, we'll see you guys back in five minutes.
Welcome back, everybody. I can't hear you, Sarah. Okay, there you are. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> you can see my screen? We're good to go? Yes, we can awesome. see everybody. Yes. Okay. Okay. I see in the chat that Miss Mina said she used a haiku generator online and it wrote her a funny poem. <laughs> yes. I think we want to hear that yeah. funny poem. We're going to have to. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, if you're comfortable, let's, uh, you know, whoever is, uh, there we go. Okay, so I mean, it just asks you to put, plug in the words, right? Like adjectives, nouns, whatever, right? So I use some of the samples that it gave me and uh, it's, uh, it's called Autumn Day. And this is, this is how it reads. Pleasurable fall, a more snugly chocolate runs, enjoying the cat. <laughs> nice and it had to be cat right I, yeah I had to find that really funny <laughs> there's a lot of cat lovers on here <laughs> uh okay, I, william wrote one he says winds never ceasing preludes renewing cycle it is ug season <laughs> oh my gosh yes <laughs> not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing there's like a love-hate relationship with uggs Ugg. yes <laughs> Oh, look, it's Marco Flores. Hi, Marco. His is, the bird has flown away, flying in the evening sun, a breathing tree. Wow, that's good. That's really good, yeah. guys. Wow. Okay, we have another one. And this one looks like it might be from uh, Elizabeth. Majestic palm trees sway, laugh, tremble, rustle, Grin. Grin. <laughs> oh, cool. I like it. <laughs> okay. Kenya says hers is not. Uh, okay. Wait a minute. We need to finish Elizabeth. This is stretching to oh, the sky. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay. okay. You know, one more time. Majestic palm trees sway, laugh, tremble, rustle, grin, stretching to the sky. That's very true. And a lot of, of that is um, our very own view from the windows. You know, there's a row of beautiful, um, majestic palm trees. palm trees, you know, so I could see her inspiration from that, especially since she's got her windows up there. <laughs> yes, of course, Miss Kenya says she did not write a haiku, but she wrote her own poetry. And if you're willing to share, we would like to hear it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Do we need to unmute to you, Kenya? Or let's see, ask to unmute. Okay. Give me one second. Okay, take your time. So uh, we have a lot of uh, entries here. Does anybody think that they might want to contribute this to the anthology that we're putting together? Let's see here. Because the more, the merrier. I know that I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to start jotting down a couple of more ideas. Like Pat has those few books there. I'm going to give him a look over. And this is, we're waiting for Miss Kenya to finish her poem, which is there mm -hmm. is no hurry. No. I also wanted to mention that Miss Erica DeBorn, one of our uh, speakers, artists that spoke with us uh, previously, also mentioned two books. And we actually have them here in the library. It is The Uninhabitable Earth, Life After Warming. And the other one was, this changes everything. So we do have them here. And as I mentioned before, if you are one of our community members, we do have community cards available for you just to bring, you know, a driver's license kind of situation. We are open. Uh, should we plug in our hours? Let's plug them in. Okay. We, we are, are open Monday mm -hmm. through through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. We are open on Friday from 7 to 5 and on Saturdays from uh, 10 to 2 and Sundays 2 to 6. So y'all are all welcome to stop by. If you need help, if you're one of our students, you need help with research, please stop by. We are here to help you. There is always someone available. So just stop by and visit with us. We are here for you. Definitely. It looks like we have two more entries in our chat here. The first one is from uh, Elizabeth, and it starts off as, my face is covered, always six feet apart from the safe, clean, sweet air. Nice. Oh, that is so cool. That is, that is. right up our alley with the pandemic. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Our new uh, lifestyle is, is inspiring artwork or, you know, exactly here. Okay. Uh, Kenya has, anyone can spark a fire, anyone can toss a bottle in the ocean, 
Anyone can let go of a plastic bag, but it takes all of us to change our home, our earth, our world, our environment, our mother nature is our home. Yes, reduce, reuse, and recycle, but open your heart and soul to realize the truth behind the mold. Oh, that is a great poem. Wow, that was awesome. That was yes, super awesome. Yes, I think that should be included in our anthology. Definitely. All of them were um, amazing submissions. You know, the chocolate yes. cat. <laughs> yes. Thank you all for sharing. Thank you, know, you I know very much. Yes. You know, it's really, really sometimes kind of daunting to come up with something. But yes, thank you so very much for sharing. And, and of course, the series, our lecture series are amazing. And we're exploring different types of concepts uh, as ways to express ourselves. And we wanted to express ourselves, like I said, through poetry. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, South Texas College, uh, our library will be offering uh, the opportunity to contribute to our anthology like we mentioned earlier uh, and that we're putting together so I don't know if this is a good time to share uh, our blog post mm -hmm. okay so in the event you may have missed our previous lecture series like I said we have it posted on our blog site uh, it's a recording just as you saw uh, today we recorded our own talk Ooh, so, we have another one we have another one we oh, have someone okay. else yes, yes, yes. yay Awesome. Okay, it's not a haiku, but he wrote one on fall season. Okay. It's nice and cool outside. Let's get our bikes and go for a ride. We can watch the leaves hit the grass and maybe even ride in the stash. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yes. Yeah. Guys, a lot of talent is, out there. It, exactly. And you want to know that something that's super awesome is, you know, look at something that we're doing today. These talks, these lecture talks, you know, uh, introduced me even more so to poetry, you know, uh, and we're getting to reach out and talk, talk to our community, to our faculty, to our students. And I think that's really pretty amazing, just having this opportunity to have a platform to share with others uh, about our changing environment. And in uh, next, on the first Thursday of uh, October, uh, we'll have the same thing. We're going to have a lecture series. Uh, this Let time me it'll go be ahead and put up the blog where it okay. has our previous speakers. Go so that it. way we, everybody can see in case you hadn't seen it. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it's going to that. be about, okay, so if you scroll down, just, okay, that's actually Erica DeBorn's artwork. That's the whale that I was explaining earlier with all the trash on its back and then the children in front, um, plane and again she described this as the uh, concept of you know we go to the beach we enjoy the beach but yet turn a blind eye to this you know trash that's mounting and, and damaging our, our animals okay so if you scroll down just a little bit here uh, that is a uh, list of uh, the artists that we were talking about today Ernesto Herrera with his beautiful pictures uh, we had uh, Elizabeth Hollenbeck she was the host for that uh, series, and then Tamara Meckler, she uh, was the co-founder of Fortuna Cools uh, that made the coolers out of the husks of coconuts. Coconut and if you scroll down just a little bit more from there, uh, we have the recording of that uh, lecture series there. Um, in case you There's, missed it and you want to, you know, it's amazing. It's really good. Yes, yes. Okay. We recommend it, yes. And then uh, on the first Thursday of October, uh, okay, if let I'm me share not that one. mistaken, yeah, go ahead while I get the dates on here for the October one. It looks like it'll be actually October the 1st. So uh, on October the 1st, you're going to uh, be introduced to uh, more uh, artists uh, within a lecture. And the topic is going to be about political change okay um, the date that you see up here environmental change is today so October 8th or okay um, and then we're they're also going to have a talk show or series just as you see today and um, uh, they're going to discuss a little bit about the the people that uh, were guests of uh, that lecture series there. Right. Um, don't forget that your poetry submissions for the anthology, uh, that link is on here. Actually, you can see it. Uh, right it here. says poetry submission form, right? And it will close on October 1st, but it's going to open for the next 
theme, which is the uh, political. social political right theme, right? And so, like I said, um, you know, our anthology is going to be a visual representation of what's going on in our community, and the idea is to reflect and archive our experiences with the changing environment. So, here if you've are missed, some of the, I'm sorry. Here are some of the no, no, guidelines in case uh, you know you want you're interested in doing this. Mm -hmm. So, it even has a guidelines here. All this you find on our web white library website. So, as long as you get to our library website, all the information is there. If you guys missed any of our lecture series, they'll be posted on the library's uh, website, on our blog. And like I said, we really do invite you guys to watch the previous lecture in case you missed it. A big thank you for everybody who contributed their artwork. Yes, thank you very much. Amazing. Yes, that was awesome. I hope you enjoyed our own uh, talk today about, you know, the changing environment, how we can uh, use poetry as a medium to share to, you know, for therapeutic purposes. And, uh, and again, we invite you to the uh, anthology. And please, you know, make sure you uh, uh, join the next people that are coming out. Our fellow, our fellow staff librarians uh, yes, and yes, specialists yes, yes. coming up. You know, for our there are going to be more talks. There's going to be more lectures. There's going to be more of this. So please, please spread the word. Let everybody know we're doing this. All righty. So, if uh, do you guys have any other questions or comments for us that we can uh, share with other people? And uh, we'll give you like just a couple of seconds for that. And if not, well, like I said, we thank you again for joining us today. It was really awesome to be a part of something that's uh, very much new and look forward to other opportunities to uh, connect with you guys. We're getting some uh, thank yous from everybody. Uh, and thank Sabrina you says guys. we did an awesome job. Thank Woo! you, Sabrina. And of course, uh, Gabriel said the same thing and you know, and of course we wanna thank y'all. The poems were wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing. Awesome. Y'all should do the October one also. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, your yeah. <laughs> I'll be there. Don't worry. <laughs> November, me too. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll be there. <laughs> and again, thank you all. Thank you so much. We truly yes. appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.